Every weekday, more than 5 million people travel beneath and throughout the city on one of the world's oldest and most extensive metro systems, the New York City subway. Even though New Yorkers frequently argue that the system is beginning to show something unexpected about the subway, it has also amassed many secrets. This secret subway system has the potential to save New York from traveling difficulties. To learn more, watch the video through to the conclusion. Hello and welcome to Building the Future. In today's video, we are going to talk about the secret subway that is ready to save New York. But before we continue, just take a moment to subscribe to our channel, Building the Future, and hit the notification bell for more amazing videos just like this one. Without further ado, let's get started on today's video. The duration of the journey between New York City's outer boroughs has been one of the most annoying aspects of the city. Since so many of New York City's communities have become transit wasteland due to motorways and subway lines directed toward Manhattan, 900,000 residents must endure long commutes. New Yorkers have had enough. The Interborough Express, a new train service that connects Brooklyn and Queens, is outdated and abandoned. Freight rails spanning 14 miles between Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and Jackson Heights in Queens was introduced by Governor Kathy Huckel in her State of the State Address. The cost of this subway is just unbelievable, but will it even be beneficial for New Yorkers? Together, let's find out. New York City has a giant subway system. It is excellent at moving people into and out of Manhattan, with more than 470 stations spread over four boroughs. However, there is an issue. Many people visit Manhattan when they don't truly need to, and finding the places they need to go is challenging. There isn't truly a subway line that connects the outlying boroughs of New York City, although millions of people live and work there. It is crucial to know what proposal was made by MTA. According to the MTA's most recent plan, a new subway line will use an old freight rail route to connect Brooklyn and Queens. Many people's life may change as a result of this. More work must be done before it becomes a reality, as construction in New York is never simple. Lower Manhattan was the city's area with the most people when the subway system was first planned. The lines from Manhattan to the outer boroughs were also enlarged as the network extended. As a result, the city had a network of lines connecting the outer boroughs to Manhattan, but just a few lines around the rest of the town. This model was adopted elsewhere besides New York. From the city's core business district, metro networks extend outward in Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Stockholm. Moscow, for example, has a ring line connecting its outer borough, but in New York, Manhattan remains at the center of the system. A Region at Risk, a report published in 1996 by the Regional Plan Association, was the first to advocate for a subway line linking New York City's outer boroughs. The Triboro RX subway line, which would connect the Bronx, Queens, and Brooklyn using the current Bay Ridge Branch Freight Route, was promoted in the report by senior transportation fellow Jeffrey Zupan. Zupan added, We had many proposals in the region at risk, and some of them struck the mark straight away, and some didn't. I'm sorry to say that the Triboro RX wasn't one of those that was even mentioned for 10 or 15 years. Today, the Interborough Express is a continuation of that plan from 26 years ago. According to Regional Plan Association Executive Vice President Kate Slevin, because people have seen the job growth, there has been a lot more interest in improving transportation in the outer boroughs than there was in the 1990s. According to the MTA's feasibility analysis, the area next to the Interborough Express is predicted to have a population growth of tens of thousands of people and an increase in employment during the next 25 years. The 14-mile trip on the Interborough Express from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, to Jackson Heights in Queens would take 40 minutes or less. It would deviate from New York's typical structure of subway lines extending out from Manhattan crossing two outer boroughs and running through up to 17 active subway lines that enter Manhattan. According to the MTA, the Interborough Express would carry up to 88,000 passengers each day and could cut commute times by more than 30 minutes. 
Historically, communities with insufficient public transportation services can notice a significant improvement. Three out of 10 individuals served by the suggested road are people of color living below the poverty line, making up 70% of the population. There's an intriguing opportunity inherent in the way the line is built. In addition, there are several unanswered questions regarding how the Interborough Express might function in practice. It has not yet been decided whether conventional rail, light rail, or bus rapid transit will be used to serve the line. Additionally, it is unknown how the project will be funded. According to the MTA chairman, the cost is expected to be in the 2.8% trillion, and construction will take three to five years. There is already a rail line in a location known as the Bay Ridge Branch. Currently, the Bay Ridge Branch only sees one freight train make the round trip every day. The Interborough Express will repurpose the underutilized railway to offer commuter service while also expanding the nearby freight services. It was once a passenger service line that began operations in 1876 but was discontinued in 1924 because of a drop in Manhattan Beach tourism. This undertaking should be far less expensive than creating a brand new subway system from scratch. Building a subway in New York City is among the priciest projects in the world, and that will be a big selling point as the project looks for funding. However, adding passenger carriages to the already existing railway is not as easy as it might seem. There are numerous engineering difficulties that the Metropolitan Transportation Authority must overcome. They will have to make their way around a fuel pipeline that supplies the LaGuardia and JFK airports. A portion of the elevated new route would have to cross other subway lines and traffic on the roads. Additionally, a new passenger line might not have enough vertical clearance to pass through some established underpasses. The air rights above a portion of the current route have been leased or sold to private developers, further complicating matters. To avoid the existing properties, the MTA would have to build new viaducts or tunnels, which would cost more time and money. The connection to the Bronx, a crucial component of the RPA's initial Triboro RX proposal, is absent from the current proposal. According to several Bronx residents, the Interborough Express proposal doesn't include them. Furthermore, State Senator Jessica Ramos has requested that the governor connect that borough. The conclusion of a feasibility study conducted by the MTA demonstrates that it is physically possible to handle passenger traffic alongside the existing freight rail traffic, that there is a sizable demand, and that conventional heavy rail, light rail, and bus rapid transit are all viable possibilities for possible modes of transportation. The MTA's subsequent action will be to conduct the necessary state and federal environmental studies, which will involve getting feedback from the impacted communities, elected authorities, and other essential stakeholders. The best thing is that the project will be finished much more quickly than if it were starting from scratch because the rail lines already exist. Yes, this would significantly improve connectivity between boroughs, east of the G, there is a significant shortage of efficient north-south travel. The Q53 is not relatively quick or dependable enough. What do you think? Will this project be good for New Yorkers or not? If you live in New York, what would you say about this? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Feel free to share your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Building the Future and hit the bell icon for more intriguing content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.